that this is what you're learning to do. This is it. I love that. And you're helping other people do this too. Yeah. Exactly. Like this is the coach's job. Yeah, this is the thing. <laughs> I was going to say, like, in my opinion, it teaches you to be a better coach. Yeah. Wow, bro! Wow, bro! We're live. <laughs> no, we're live. Welcome to this week's episode on the Wild Roads Podcast with Shana Lee and Paula, the IV. Oh, wow. This episode, how to shift your competitive mindset. Yes. Are you excited? Are you a competitive person by nature or were you? Do you know what? I have moments where I am, but naturally I don't think I'm very competitive. But... Yes. I do feel like when building my business mm-hmm. and seeing other people do something similar to me, there's like this competitiveness that naturally comes up. And I think that that's more of a, more of a societal influence to be mm-hmm. competitive and mm-hmm. to be, want to like outdo your competitors and all of that sort of stuff. But I feel like as a child and just naturally, I'm not that competitive. No. Yeah. Naturally. What about you? Are you naturally competitive, Sean? It depends who with. Mm. So, like, I've gotten friends, yes. You know, growing <laughs> up, like, especially with my brother, I was just like, I, well, I needed to be the fastest runner out of all of my family. Like that cousins and everything. Like I had to be the fastest runner. <laughs> and I'd push myself to the point where I'd fall on my face because my body was going way too fast for my legs. <laughs> and, but as far as business, I learned a long time ago. I don't know. I, I'm not competitive in business. The only thing is very similar to yours is that someone that's doing something similar to me that's like does activate or I'm triggered in some way to be competitive, it really just pushes me harder. I just go, mm. I just kick my own ass. That's it. Yeah. It's kicking my own ass. But before we begin this episode, let's let's dive into our awkward question time. Okay. All right. Well, have you had a moment in competitive spirit where you've gone for it and it's been a moment, an embarrassing moment, you failed, something awkward? Mm. So... I used to like not compete in stuff because <laughs> I was like not really into it. But there was, Except you know, dancing, team right? sport. Co- hey. Except dancing, right? Oh, yeah. But I, that was, I never really competed in dance though. Okay. There yeah. were certain like award things that we would do and like exams and things and the end of your concert but there was never really any like we didn't we weren't a dance school that went and competed against okay. other dance schools we were just you know having fun but I did when I was oh I think I must have been maybe 13 or 14 I decided to play netball because all girls played netball so I thought okay well I must have to go play, play netball because I'm a girl and that's what all my friends did and so when you go play netball at the club that we went at, you had to do, go do tryouts and then they rank you. So all the best players are in one team and like, you know, so on down the line. And I was like pulled into like the worst team, like mm-hmm. the bottom team, right? The one full of people that don't know what the hell they're doing pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I was not in the team with all of my friends, but that's okay. Cause I was like, I don't know netball. I'm learning. And so we pretty much lost every single game (laughs) of the season. (laughs) And I just remember, like, we all just went out there and really did not have a clue what we were really doing. And I just remember our coach (laughs) at the end of each game just sitting by the sidelines with her head in her hands, just about to cry, just like, I don't know what's happening. (laughs) Aww. we're all like do we do good weirdest <laughs> <laughs> thing ever so obviously your coach was competitive <laughs> She's like, she was just like i can't and i remember we actually we got a new coach halfway through i don't think she could deal with it she's just <laughs> like i can't <laughs> 
oh well <laughs> you served the purpose you showed up for the other team <laughs> we did we did we were like the practice team yeah. <laughs> the easy win where people are like all right we're just gonna have like you know a practice game today <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh gosh it's funny mm, what about you uh look I tried lots of different sports I was you know i I did, you know, pony club. I was dancing. I did a Stedford. I was very competitive in um, my dance. So a Stedford, mm-hmm. I used to choreograph solo once I got older and stuff, but I, like solo duos, group numbers and stuff. I was very competitive in that. Gave it all I got. Um, if I lost, I didn't, you know, like no big deal. It wasn't like, oh, my God, this is terrible. <laughs> like, no, nah, I gave it all I had, but I, it was just, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't like it was win or die but I remember like I tried everything netball had a crack basketball had a crack basketball Mm -hmm. oh my god I had a crack (laughs) I tried tried, and I think I was about 12 ah it was a grand final so our team made the grand final but the other players got there not me got us there Mm. but um I just remember giving it my all because it was the grand final and there was more people watching because more parents and grandparents came. Mm. And I got the ball and I ran and I was just like, thought I was the fastest runner ever in the world. No one was chasing me. No one was around me. I did this big layup. I scored a goal. And then nice. I just felt there was silence and then all of a sudden I'm turning around and there's just everyone looking at me and it's like, yeah, I just scored a goal for the other side because I went down the wrong end. <laughs> <laughs> it was my moment of glory. I'd made it. I'd made it as a basketball <laughs> team player. But just, I gave up after that season. I was like, yeah, this isn't for me. <laughs> the show is just like, yes, no, it. No, high fives. Why does nobody high five me? What's going on? <laughs> you get back up don't you you just get back up you You do yeah I guess yeah growing up in a household where my parents weren't very into a specific thing that pushed us to be really competitive yeah but yeah the the sibling like the sibling competitiveness Mm -hmm. was definitely a thing too I mean my older brother was like always been twice as big as me so it was kind of like I didn't even compete with (laughs) Like competing with him because he just if I beat him I'd just get sat on or like punched or like pushed over straight away <laughs> but with my little brother it was really competitive yeah but yeah it's um it's an interesting topic because even mm. if you don't have a naturally competitive spirit about you and I know plenty of people who are very competitive and like I get that about people and I it's right it's like it depends on what it is that you that like what situation you're in and what friends you're around as well there's certain yeah. things that I am competitive with but for the most part I'd say that I'm not very highly competitive and if people are like going at it I'd rather like sit back with some popcorn and be like all right who's gonna win this because this is entertaining yeah um but when it comes to creating a brand and a business there's what feels like the the paradigm of when you're in business everyone's your competition mm. and there's a lot of people saying you know old school business jargon around you know take a look at what your competition is doing and then and then you come out with something that you know is better or Mm -hmm. different or so you stand out from your competition you know wording like that and that I think was one of one of the things that I love about my entrepreneurial journey so far is really taking that mentality of everyone's my competition and if other people are doing something similar to me I must be better than them and I must beat them and defeat them and come out on top into we're all here and there's enough room for everyone and 
you win more when you collaborate with other people versus seeing them as your competition and trying to outdo everybody else. Yeah, totally. There is room for everyone. I did learn that early on as well. It was just like, don't even look at my competition. And here locally, when I first started my business here locally in my hometown, um, you know, there was many interior designers and color consultants. This is years and years ago. And I remember someone saying, oh, look, I will take your photos for you, but just to let you know, my wife's a stylist as well. And da, da, da. I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. Like, I'm, I'm, it, that doesn't worry me. There's no competition here. Like, there's room for everybody, even in a town, a suburb. There's room for everybody. But, that, like, even more so in the online space, in our ecosystem, which is massive, by the way, like it's heaps of room for everybody. And when I realized that, like, you know what, it did, it did change. My, I did change a little bit, like your ego creeps in, things creep in when I was first starting online back in 2014. I remember looking and, and looking at the competition and just really comparing myself to that and where I am in, in the stage of where I'm at and working out you know, what people are doing better than what I am and, and their level of success compared to mine. Um, so that does, that did creep in. And sometimes, geez, human, I'm like, that might come and activate me every now and again, but I've got the tools now to, to go through that. But what I learned is it was hindering my performance. My yeah. focus and energy was more on the, com- of my competition, inverted commas, than my work that I'm good at yeah it's it's the classic manifestation law of attraction here it's like you're focusing on the lack you're focusing on what you're lacking compared to your competitors and what are you going to get more of more of that lack so I totally get that that it, it does it hinders your work how you feel about yourself the level of creativity that you ultimately allow yourself to dive into because the more that I find the more that I compare myself to others and really look at what other people who are doing similar things and comparing like my prices what I offer how I offer it all of these things because it it starts to put up these these you know rules these invisible rules up of like oh it has to be like that because that person's done it like that and I can see you know for for my when I have my photography business and even now sessions now like photo shoots now and I don't even know what other photographers charge like I've got my prices and I've had my prices like that for a while since you know that's only just a part of my business Mm. and I know that I've had I've had quite a few inquiries over the past few months and I've booked in quite a lot of clients as well but the thing is you know some people have said your prices, oh, your prices are a bit too high, blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, that's fine. But like that doesn't actually worry me because I know that especially in photography, like there's such a range of how much people charge Mm. and what they charge and their services and everything. And it is really an industry where people compare themselves to others and this happens so often is that we look at what other people are doing and how much they're offering, like how much they're offering a course for, how much, how much they're offering a session for or a package or whatever it is. And you go and you compare because you want to be like, you want to be smart and have a, have a price that kind of makes sense. But at the same time, everybody's just making it up, but you're kind of putting this limitation on yourself or you're trying to outdo your comp- your competition. Yep. Some people think if they lower their prices, they're going to get more clients because, oh, I'm cheaper than, you know, most of the people out there. Yep. But also there's the flip side of the mentality of like, why are they so cheap? They mustn't be yeah, very, very good. Exactly. So this is where comparing yourself to other people really stirs up a whole bunch of anxiety and fear and lack and not good enoughness and it just stirs the wrong kind of pot when you're trying to outdo one another yeah when you're trying to be the competition 
you're like purposely putting yourself in that position of I'm your competition and I'm going to outdo you with price or I'm going to outdo you with like what I offer or whatever it is. And you're right. When you try to, to do that and you compare yourself to others, it really does hinder your creativity and your expression and how much you're like what you're here to actually bring, because you kind of lose that creativity with the packages and with the pricing and with what you're here to offer and how you're here to offer it and all of these things because you're ultimately just putting yourself up against other people. Absolutely you are and you, you're diluting your being, you're diluting your brand, you're diluting everything about you because the energy is not there. And so when we think about, but hang on, people aren't taking notice of me. Like I'm, I'm working really hard here and people aren't taking notice of me. It's really interesting to, to, to think about. So my competitors, this is maybe another way of thinking about it. My competitors, are they thinking about me or are they just on their own game? Like, Probably not. No. The people that are successful are not thinking about their competitors. No. Never. Well, maybe sometimes, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's focusing on your own game and that's where it's at. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like, you can either be somebody who is looking out for the trends and looking out for what's happening in certain industries and adjusting who you are to fit in, Mm. or you can be a leader and an innovator. And that comes from not caring what other people are doing and not trying to make yourself like everybody else to then just stand out. It kind of seems like a backwards thing. You're like, oh, I'm like this group of people doing this thing. How am I like them? Okay, and then how do I stand out? When just do your own thing and you naturally stand out to begin with. That's right. That's, yeah, dead set. Like, and standing on other people's shoulders. Like, you know what I mean? The leaders aren't, the, the real successful leaders aren't standing on other people's shoulders either. Like, they're not, they're not, the crabs in the bucket analogy, you know, the crabs mm. trying to, you know, crawl out of the bucket and all these other crabs are trying to bring them down so that they can get out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that's just exhausting. Absolutely. Mm. Just just be a fish that's just swimming around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> but, oh my God. That keeps swimming. Like yeah. Lori and her mates in Nemo, like when they had to, you know, free the fish out of the the um, nets and they're all like, keep swimming. And it was like the power of more fish rather than one fish swimming down to the bottom to break off the net to free them, right? Mm. Which kind of like brings us to why we love masterminds, the power yeah. of more. Exactly. Around us, the power of collecting, like they're not our competitors, they're like we're collaborating together. Yeah. We're working as a team. Yes. Good segue, Paula. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where that was going, but it did. It led in quite quite brilliantly. This is something that we wanted to discuss today was masterminds because masterminds are a beautiful space for women to get together or people, like-minded people, to come together or people who aren't necessarily all like-minded but who want to, who are like-minded in in the way that they're wanting to do things in this world. They want support, they want to be held, they want to be seen and they want to help other people as well to really share what it is that we're here to do and build successful businesses and do it in a way that really feels authentic and really feels like love and that feels, you know, joyful yeah, and all of these things. So masterminds are when you have many minds come together. So, you know, I've run masterminds. I've been in masterminds. Shona has two. At the moment we've got our Entourage mastermind, which we are promoting, which Shona and I are running together. And for us, entourage was like the perfect name for it because it is, it's like an entourage. Yeah. And when you think of entourage, you think of like, you know, the star, the movie star, the musician, whoever it is, and they have this whole entourage of people that help take care of them. They're there, you know, to help them 24 seven. 
They show them where to go if they need help. They help get things organized and like clear the way and all of these things. And this is kind of like the energy of a mastermind in that we're all each other's entourages. Yeah. When you get out of the competitive mindset of everybody else is my competition, you get into this mindset of we're all collaborators. We're all here to support one another. We're all here to rise together, Mm -hmm. but we are all the star of our own show we are all the lead in our own life yes so having an entourage is really a beautiful space for you to come into and know that you are seen you are held you have support if you have any questions there's people to help you if you feel like you can't do it there's people to help show you the way if you're having one of those days where you're just like I literally want to give up and quit. Like I can't do this anymore. Yeah. It's a place for you to fall into and really be seen and held in that. And we all know that you're not going to quit, but there are days where it really feels like that you really want to, you want to just have the simple life and go get a job and just stop doing this because it's just too much because it does, it gets, it feels overwhelming and too much at times. Yeah. But we all get that because we're all in the same, you know, doing the same things our own work, but it's all the same sort of work in that we're all growing and evolving together. That's right. And we all go through these ebbs and flows with it. Some days it feels really amazing and all the money come, comes in and we're selling things out and, you know, we've got so much to say and people are responding and it feels really great. And then other days you're like, it feels like nobody's fucking listening to me. Yeah. I feel like nobody sees me. I feel like it's not working. What has happened? Like it's inevitable to have those highs and lows. Oh, for sure. It's, you know, and the, and I guess the beautiful part of the mastermind is that you can be completely raw and honest there mm. and you can lay your heart out on any given day and go, oh, no one's like even looked at my new thing, you know, and there's, and we've all been there. And we all know it and we all know what it takes to get us through and move through the energy. And, uh, and it's a beautiful part. It's a collective. It's not just you and your coach, which is still a beautiful part of a mastermind, right? But but being in the mastermind with the collective, with the people that are in there. Like before I had been in a mastermind, I was a little bit shy of one, to be completely honest. I was a bit mm. shy of one because I thought I don't know how to be like that in a group setting. Like I just selfishly want my coach, me and her, I want her eyes on me. That's it. No one else, you know, not no one else, but you know what I mean? I want my time with my coach. That's it. But, you know, it was the, when I signed up and we, and and having my one-on-one sessions, and it's just like, we're in the mastermind. It's just like, oh, wow. It was like walking into a room with all these like, crystals and beautifulness like sparkling things to look around at you know to to feast my eyes on but it was just like listening to these stories it I have never moved or grown so fast as I had previously in all my entrepreneurship and personal development that I had when I was in the mastermind Mm. it was it was a rapid growth but it was nurturing and it felt home and it felt like I belonged there and it felt like there was, I mean, not felt like, there was no hierarchy. There was no better than. Mm. It was just us all doing things together in our own way, yes. We all had our different idiosyncrasies. We all had our different way of, you know, our different messages, our different branding. But on a whole, we're all being better, like, like moving in this entrepreneurial world we're moving in our in our soul work and we all know what it takes but also we know what it feels like to to fall to to what we feel like we're falling to to feel so vulnerable and raw and it hurts and we cry and we laugh and we celebrate and we you know just hold each other up and we invest in each other it is a beautiful, beautiful way to develop new skills in coaching, in anything, to develop your confidence and your bravery, 
to develop relationships that continue on after you've been in this space Mm. to develop a new set of you know what like new offerings that you hadn't even thought of before but people people get to know you and see your genius that you you can't even see yourself Mm. you know it's just it's magical yeah yeah it is it is a magical thing and being able to witness one another because there are there there are things that other people can see that you're because you're so in it yeah you're so in like in your own stuff that sometimes you don't even see the most blindingly obvious answers yeah. and it's so funny when that happens and you have these moments of just like ah oh, and people are like yeah and you're like, oh, it's always been that. And like, yeah, we've been trying to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just landed. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is, is that I really love about the masterminds, and I've been in a few, is that it is really a space that you can bring anything to the table and know mm-hmm. that they aren't going to judge you. Yeah. Because, I mean, I can't speak for all masterminds, but this is where I, this is where coming into spaces and really feeling into and, and making sure that, you know, you feel good about the investments that you're making and who you're choosing as your mentors Mm -hmm. and what masterminds you are in and the people that you surround yourself with that. Yeah. Get, get into spaces where you can really bring anything to the table and you know that you're not going to be judged because you know, you are surrounded by people who have had similar experiences similar thoughts and that really get how dark it can get yeah and how how much being in a space as well of people doing very similar things to you even if like it's labeled differently or they've gotten different you know backgrounds in training and where they're coming from and where they're coming at it is like especially in the coaching world if you're in the coaching world you're wanting just to help people yeah like ultimately your tools and resources and the way that you go about that is is by your own past experiences what you've learned what trainings you've done all of these things but then when you boil it all down we're wanting to serve people we're wanting people to feel seen and heard and to see their own brilliance and for us to help them expand in the ways that they want to be expanded so it does get really activating at times being in these uh masterminds and i know that uh i've seen plenty examples of people who have been in masterminds or been mentored by certain people and then it's gotten to a place where it's activated them in some way perhaps it's brought up a fear response or a trauma response of some sort Mm -hmm. and instead of sitting with it and working through it and growing through it they've thrown in the towel and gone yeah that mentor that mastermind is toxic and all of these things I'm sure that there are are places that probably are and people that are but for the most part what I've experienced is that and I don't think this gets spoken about enough is that when you do work with a coach or mentor and you are in a mastermind and you're working with other people that it is a path of growth and evolution and growth and evolution is not pain free. It's going to touch on so much shit. (laughs) It's going to bring out and dig out and poke at all of the parts within you that is going to be like, I don't want to grow in this particular way right now because Mm -hmm. I believe this. And if we go in that direction, this belief needs to stay behind or I need to shift something within myself. Like our ego does not like change. It likes things to stay the same. It likes to know its stuff. It likes to know, you know, where everything is placed and all of the things that when we when we do grow and evolve it is a wild ride and this is where the ebbs and flows come in and the mastermind is such a beautiful place because you can come in with everything but at the same time there are going to be moments where and like I (laughs) I've said this to to mentors that I've worked with in the past is like I want to punch you in the face right now like what you've just said to me 
the advice that you've given or the questions that you've asked me with what I've brought to the table, yeah. like people in masterminds and all the things, it's like, I really, this is just like, no, like, no, how dare you say that to me? Really and this is where we get to see these are the moments that even though you want to like, you know, throw your phone to the floor or you shut your laptop off and like yeah. slam it across the room sort of thing, you're like, how dare they say that? Or how, like, that, those are the moments where you're just like, oh, I'm on the edge. Yes. It's broken something. Okay. Yeah. This is where the work is. Yeah. And I wouldn't know that unless I started, like I started investing in mentors and masterminds and really yeah. surrounding myself with people and not seeing other people as competition and me having to do this all by myself to obliterate everybody else and defeat everybody else, but actually to work with everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the thing. It is working with it and it getting you to your edges. Mm. And for those that are sort of just beginning this sort of work, it it's uncomfortable, but it's it's required. Mm. It's required to if it's where you want to go, by the way. Because if it's not, like if it's if it's if it's way too hard, you just go back to how things were and that's okay it's not for everybody exactly which is what I was gonna say it's it's actually so you you will grow and evolve in other ways it does not have to be this That's (laughs) that's exactly it that's exactly it and I think that I think the test for me was like if I the first time it happened if I want to go again, it's for me because <laughs> it's it's almost like like a sucker for punishment. You know how people say that, like it's you're a sucker for punishment. It's it's it feels like that initially, but then when you learn and you grow and you know it, you get to know it. You know that it's that it's the part that's going to get you to where you want to go. It's actually the elixir. Mm. it's not easy and that's why being in a mastermind makes it so healthy well especially the masterminds I've been in and the ones that you and I facilitate it's just like it's a healthy way to keep expanding to keep growing Mm. to keep yeah you know but you gotta own your own shit in there god yeah it's like you can't expect that other people in there to fix you no. Or to pick up the pieces for you and put you back together or to magically do any anything that is going to help you when you come into that space and just be like, this is all blah, 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 blah. Like do something that with that for me, please. Like hold your own and have self-responsibility because the thing is that it it is a highly – Oh, what's the word I want to use? Like the energy inside masterminds is like a highly buzzing energy. Like mm. there's a lot going on. There will be moments where like you might be having a high day and you're like, oh my God, all these parents want to in and celebrating. Yay me. And like everybody cheer me on. This is so good. I feel so good. Right. But yeah. then there could be other people in the mastermind who are like, today is literally the worst day ever that I've had in my business thus far. Yeah. And like, holding that duality and all of those energies that are coming together and when you can you know that you're in a space where you feel seen and held and all of the things in all of it and it also helps you to to be happy for and to celebrate people when you are not in a space where you're like well I'm not really celebrating that today but I can hold that for you this is this is where you really get into feeling and holding duality. And this is something that you ultimately need because you're going to have days where something's going to be ultra amazing and something else won't be. It's like when, you know, you might be having one of the best days ever, but then your kid gets sick and you're like, I'm having to deal with like all of this stuff or, you know, something might go wrong in another part of your life, but then something might be going right over here. And it's like, there's always this capability that we have as human beings to walk with happiness and sadness at the same time of, you know, love and fear at the same time. And it's really recognizing what you're focusing on, what's happening and being more conscious about that uh, instead of just allowing life to just be lifing and being like, Oh, well, you know, I'm usually 
you know, somebody who doesn't really need to worry about a lot of things, but then all this stuff started to happen. And it's like, it, for me, it was kind of like I coasted through life just wanting to be comfortable all the time. And then you open up the the road to being a personal brand and an entrepreneur. And it's kind of like, you have to learn to hold massive duality of like, Ooh, yeah huge highs and being able to celebrate them and really appreciate them and look at them and hold that really big energy of like, Oh my God. Ness. But then also being able to hold, you know, the healing and the disappointments and, Mm -hmm. you know, when something doesn't go quite right and you're like, Oh shit. Okay. Well that kind of failed, but really also learning that failure is a good thing and it's not actually a full stop it's like okay well we just take the next step like what didn't work out of that and what what did and like where are we going to go next are we going to choose to repeat that again or are we going to learn from that and move on and to have a space where people are doing that as well and really leaning into that holding of the the massive like sliding scale of like (laughs) all the feelings and all the emotions. And the more that successful you become, the bigger that scale sort of becomes like the higher the highs and the lower the lows. And this to me is ultimately what living is about is experiencing it all and playing it safe and just trying to be comfortable the whole time. You're not really, you kind of like middle lining it. And I know we've spoken about this before. It's like, you're not, you know, your heartbeat is goes up and down. It's like, you're trying to, you're flatlining through life. If you're just wanting to be comfortable. And I mean, this is how I feel like some people probably put on this earth just to feel comfortable the entire time. And that's their, that's their sole purpose. Like go you, that's awesome, but it's definitely not mine. And it really, it helps you feel so alive when you do this work. But the, the flip side to that is that this is what you're learning to do. This is it. I love that. And you're helping other people do this too. Yeah. Exactly. Like this is the coach's job. Yeah, this is the thing. <laughs> I was going to say, like, in my opinion, it teaches you to be a better coach. Yeah. Because not everyone's going to go through the same thing on the very same minute and the very same hour and the very same day. Like, mm. you're going to have clients that are so far up high and adrenaline rush and so like, oh my God, this is the best thing that's ever happened in my life. And on that same day or even the next hour, you're going to have someone that's like, oh my God, I don't know how to move right now. I'm so stuck, you know? So it's kind of like, this is the thing. This is the the beautifulness and the the power, I reckon. That's my word for it, from us once because it gives you so much it, it becomes a way of how you do it like it, it becomes like breathing like you know it because you're in it every day so it becomes easier to have the energies to be able to hold both mm. hold both extremes and all the in between mm. when you're going to a gym like they say like 21 days to to change a habit or you know like to to go there and you condition your muscles and and things get a little bit easier it's the same as speaking if the more you do your lives or the more you do your speaking gigs the easier things come out and you get to learn your muscles develop you know and your cognitive muscles and all of that sort of stuff it's it's the same thing your coaching muscles develop yeah actually science with paula oh yay (laughs) <laughs> man this needs to be a thing because we always have a little <laughs> science with Paula <laughs> so science with Paula moment there is a an amazing neuro, neuroscientist I think he's called a neuroscientist called um, Dr Andrew Huberman I follow him on Instagram and on YouTube he's got some amazing podcasts that he does they go for like two hours but he goes into the science of stuff right yeah and one I watched about habits and forming habits like how how does it actually work in your brain and your body to actually form a habit like what's the process and all that sort of stuff he goes into it with the, all the chemicals and you know all the stuff that goes on in your body when that happens right and he found studies on this that actually it takes anywhere between 14 and 286 or something days for you to form a habit. Mm. And just because certain things are easier, like, yeah, it doesn't mean that 
you're somebody who, if I want to form a habit, it's always going to be like 56 days. Yeah, right. It's like different things. It depends on where you're starting with it. Yeah. And if you can attach it to other habits and things that you do as to how quickly or like how long it takes you to develop a certain habit. So I actually found this so fascinating because like you, I thought it was always 21 days because everybody talks about 21 days and we form Mm. this new habit. And like, that doesn't always happen. Yeah. And like right. at the tw- end of the 21 days, you're kind of like, um, I stopped doing it. <laughs> so obviously it didn't work. But well, this is the thing. This is the thing. It's really brilliant to be able to try stuff out to see if it actually yeah. is something that you do want to continue doing it because a part of it has to be some sort of, it evokes some sort of like inner motivation for you because you see some results and you want to keep going. And there's so many different things in the work that we do that we ultimately want to form habits around like being consistent and, you know, um, perhaps like doing live streams or certain kinds of posts or videos or whatever it is, because that's what we are being drawn to do. And it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that something isn't for you if you don't feel like doing it mm-hmm. so this is this is the thing right when we're talking about habits because there's usually like the first couple of days and you're like I'm gonna do this new habit I'm gonna do a live stream every single day or I'm gonna like I don't know do some kind of exercise every single day right yeah. whatever and like the first couple of days you usually have this natural motivation for it because you've chosen to do it and you felt some sort of inspiration to do it right but then that tails off and you don't always have that motivation to keep going you don't always have even that feeling inside of you like I really feel like doing this today and this is what I found with like a lot of the things that I do in my my business and my work is that a lot of the stuff I actually don't really feel like doing every single day. If I, if I'm honest, if I'm completely honest, like I know that taking photos fuels my soul and I feel so good doing it, but I don't feel like taking photos every single day. Yeah. It's like you talk to most artists and whatever their art form is, you know, painting or drawing or sculpting or whatever. And you, you speak to them and they're like, yeah, I love painting. Painting is life. I love drawing. It brings me alive. All the things. But the amount of resistance that you have before you do the actual thing can be really, really high. It's like, I don't really feel like doing it today. I'm just going to clean up and then I'll start doing it. And then I'm going to do this and then I'll start doing it. Like we put things off and this is where it's so interesting. And I, and I always get so curious with it and it's so beautiful to be able to hold other people in this and to gently remind them of this when this happens is that when we're doing things, there's resistance that comes up because we've decided to go do something, then we start taking action and then the resistance kicks in because what is happening is we're changing who we are. We're growing, we're evolving in some way. And our ego is like, yeah, no, I don't like this. Yeah. We're changing. Hang on. This isn't regular programming. What is going on here? In order to create habits and things like that in our in our businesses especially creative things and things that our soul is wanting us to do because ultimately you know you and me Sean like we we have these big wild beautiful visions and we're like yeah we want to do these big grand things it's like when you start taking steps towards those then you start shifting things in your world it can be really hard to feel naturally motivated to keep going because so much resistance comes up and it's just easier when that tension that you feel when resistance comes up to do something else to diminish that tension. So you're not actually sitting with the, t- the tension and like leaning into it and taking a step anyway, that feels so freaking hard. And yeah. this is why mastermind is so beautiful and working with mentors and coaches is so beautiful because they're the ones that can give you the kick up the ass. Like you can go in there and go, I don't feel like doing it today. It's too hard. And they'll be like, do it. Just do this. Do you know what would be really fun? Maybe maybe try this. And they could have other ideas for you and other ways to be able to get in there and do things. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is different. I'll try this. This yeah. is actually really fun. Yeah. And getting you moving. And, yeah, that was quite a tangent on, on the whole habits thing. But 
this is this is a big part of you know having a business you want it to be consistent and consistently growing and money to keep coming in and not be so stop start and up and down and all of these things which usually happens like a lot of the time if you allow yourself to go I don't feel like doing it today so I'll just do it tomorrow it'll be fine yeah yeah I I I love when you're saying like you know being really curious because I think what the bonus of I us having been in the space for such a long time is that we do know now the difference between resistance in that regard mm. and resistance because you're not doing what you truly want to do Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. I don't do anything that I don't want to do, but it's really looking at I do I want to do I not want to do it because it's not in alignment with myself and where I'm wanting to go mm-hmm. and how I want to do it, or do I not want to do it because there's something inside of me resisting it because we know that growth and evolution is coming because of it which we know is going to be uncomfortable and painful yeah. yeah, because we've done it before that I think the difference there of actually knowing that, because sometimes I'm like, Oh, I don't know if it, if, it, if it's one or the other, like, I just don't feel like doing it. Maybe it is because I don't really want to do That's it. That's the beautiful conversation you can have in the mastermind. Exactly. Right. But here's the thing. It's like the mastermind is a great place to share what your big visions are, what your wildest dreams are. Yeah. And they can be like, Oh, Hey, isn't your wildest dream to do this, this, and this? And you're like, yeah. Well, isn't that why you're doing this? In the oh yeah, yes. Yeah, like so if it's we... something, if it's something that's going to ultimately pull you closer to what it is that you want, get off your ass and do it. Yes. But if it's something that you feel like you should be doing, but you don't really want to do it, and you don't see how it is going to help you, then you don't have to do it. That's a th- I learned that lesson, like probably a couple of times over but like (laughs) in the mastermind like there was a time where it's just like there was my mastermind sisters like reminding me of where my where I was heading and where where I wanted to go no you don't need to do it like that person why you why did you why did you pivot down there like and it was was like oh I actually did pivot down there and it was just it was almost like it's the I used to call them the warm slaps. Do you remember I used to call them in the warm slaps? <laughs> I was just like, I felt like it was a really nice slap to the face, but it was a warm, huggy one. You know what I mean? But yeah. it was, but it like really woke me up. So it's like, oh my gosh, I've just gone off course. Like imagine, I, I said it, I said it to Simon, my partner. Imagine if I wasn't in this space and how far I would go down that road hmm. before I realized what the detriment that that was doing to my business and my soul work. But I don't think that I would have got to where I am without the masterminds and to be able to have these pe- to have these amazing people that understood me the most mm. and where I was heading. Yeah, because that's ultimately how I shifted my competitive mindset in this is like surrounding myself with people that I was being vulnerable with and they were being vulnerable with me and growing together and alongside them. And really part of it is like healing the sisterhood wounds that, that Mm -hmm. we have. Yeah. And really learning to trust one another and seeing each other and help building each other up and not feeling so much like we had to hold everything so close to our chest and not share, you know, all of the ideas and all of the things that we have going on because somebody else is going to steal it or, you know, somebody's going to undermine me and, and, you know, take it and do something else or chop me down or any of these things is that when you're in a space of collaboration, it breeds more collaboration. You're not focusing on competing with one another. You're focusing on collaborating with one another so that, you know, social media can be a highly, highly, highly activating place. Oh yeah. And if you go on there, always focusing on competition and who's my competition what's everybody out here doing today and how can I do it better then it's just going to continue to get more overwhelming and feel more stressful for you and feel like oh my god there's so many people out here and there's so many fish in the sea and how can anybody see me or hear me and all of these things when you're in the collaborative focus 
you really see how many people are expanding the field for us all. Yeah. This is what I absolutely love is that, you know, when I see somebody win, when I see somebody celebrating something, a milestone or more money coming in or more clients or, you know, things that their clients have achieved and, you know, awards that they've won or like opportunities that have come to them that when I celebrate that, I can genuinely celebrate it. Cause I'm like, oh, she's just expanded the field for us all. Like yes. Yes. the field is even bigger now, even more money can come to all of us, even more experiences and opportunities can come to all of us now because she's done it. She's expanded. This whole field is expanded now. Versus when you think about being in competition with one another, you see that she's expanded and you're like, there's less room for the rest of us. There's less money now for the rest of us. There's less resources and less opportunities for the rest of us because she's expanded. And it's so different when you're focusing on collaborating and being cheerleaders for one another and us all doing our own thing and us all being the leading role and we're all each other's entourages. When you have that, you get more of that. But when your focus is on competition, your focus is on like how little there is. So you're going to get more of that. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And look, do you know what? Anyone listening that has been feeling that they've been in that position or that they, they, they do focus on competition, there's no shame in that. Like, Oh, no. You know, and we're not is, saying that we don't ever uh, feel it. Because, like, man, I, oh, yeah. Like, it still it, comes up. Oh, yeah, it does. It does. It really is about shifting that mindset. It's not necessary. It doesn't it doesn't need to be in the space. We can do brilliant things without our without that competition mindset. But you know what? If you if you feel if you have got the competitive spirit and you want to compete against somebody, compete compete against yourself. And if that motivates you, because there's motivational psychology about you know, being competitive, like it does, it does move people. It, it does. Yeah. If I want to compete, where can I compete? That is going to benefit me, benefit my clients and, and really move that motivational needle. Yeah. Just do better against yourself. Yeah. Every time I create content, every time that I have a session with a client, every time that I'm creating something, it's me doing better yeah it's me trying to do better than I did last time yeah like that's ultimate like it's all growth and evolution so don't waste your time trying to be better than other people like spend your time on trying to create greatness within yourself you're already better than that <laughs> <laughs> boom boom we have loved this episode and talking about masterminds, why we run masterminds, why we're in masterminds. If you have any love for masterminds and all of the things, we hope that you enjoyed this, this episode and it's inspired you to join one if you haven't already, because I know it is quite daunting and kind of a little bit like, yeah. ah, I'm yeah. with other people and they're going to know all my stuff. Jump <laughs> in, it'll surprise you. Jump in. Maybe. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow, bro.